You're going to see a lot of cool stuff when you come to the Rogue Invitational. And one thing you're definitely going to see, big weights going up under the lights. Two years ago, we had the Barbell Complex. Last year was Danny Spiegel wowing the crowd on the log press. This year, it's the Max Deadlift. It is event six here at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. And the women are ready to try to pull some big weights off the ground. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland, alongside former Affiliate Cup champion Adrian Conway. And Kiki Dixon is down on the field. And Adrian, I mean, there is just nothing like a crowd and the lights and heavy weights. It's really where magic happens, to be honest with you. And these athletes are going to need every ounce of that magic tonight as they've been through quite a lot the first two days and into now the third day of competition and they're going to be riding high on all the adrenaline that comes from this magical atmosphere here in event six here are the overall standings coming into this event and it is tia toomey who remains atop the overall standings but that 60 point lead that she had going into the duel is now down to 10 points over laura horvath emma lawson sits in third she's 30 points clear of gabby mcgawa for that final spot on the podium and it's emma carey who rounds out the top five the max deadlift presented by yeti pretty simple just lift big just lift big and all you have to do is pull the weight off the floor to fully extended legs at the top the hips and knees and the shoulders need to be behind the load of course the athletes are going to do that with both hands on the barbell any grip is appropriate and feet must be within your hands so we will start with four lifting platforms four groups of five athletes the weights start at 3.05. This is going to run a lot like the log press did last year. You got Laurel Horvath, Shelby Neal, Kyra Milligan, and Danny Spiegel. No problem at 3.05. The four of them will stay alive. Once we get down to 10 athletes, we'll move to the two center platforms. And when we get down to the final five, we will move to that big platform there in the middle. Three, two, Paige Powers, Elena Caratala, Emily Rolfe, and Paige Semenza will be up next. Three, two, one, lift. Caratala is good. Powers is good. Rolfe will get her lift, and Paige Semenza gets through. And Semenza, with the way that she executed that last event there in Event 5, the speed, the power she was able to show us, we know that she is a hockey background as an athlete. She's going to be a strong puller from the floor. She's got a pretty strong lifted, listed deadlift at 395. Don't exactly know when the last time she pulled that was. But it still seems like there's plenty of room left to go for her. Three, two, one, lift. Great stays at 3.05 as we work our way through the first round. Suzanne Brandon, Melanie Menez, and Bethany Flores, no problem. And Bethany Flores chose to not even take a rep. She just kind of raised her hand, waved at the crowd, understanding that the juice isn't worth the squeeze for her and where she's at in her recovery from a back injury that she sustained just a little over a year ago to not be able to quite be prepared to pull this load off the floor. Watching that on Ignatius and missed that from Bethany Flores. Thanks for the update on that. We saw her, Bethany Flores, pass up on a back squat yesterday to receipt at the bar. And that whole crew, I would say Ariel Lowen moving the bar the slowest. Christine Kohlenbrader picked that up like it was empty. That shows great promise for her as the weight gets heavier. One thing is the audience will be able to look for and maybe have some dictators on where athletes will go with the deadlift is the speed that the barbell leaves the ground as athletes take the slack out of the bar, create the tension in their posterior. What you want to see is that the bar travels to that lockout position fairly quickly. And the longer that it takes to reach lockout, of course, the increased time under tension and the more difficulty the athletes will have to make it through this ladder. Horvath. Lawson and Carey, no problem. Three, two, one, rotate. Change the weights. 
Now we will change the weight up to 315. Nineteen of the twenty women still alive as Bethany Flores, as you mentioned, Adrian. Didn't make an attempt. There's Danny Spiegel coming off that event win in the dual three. Yeah, and Spiegel wasn't thrilled about the announcement of the deadlift. It wasn't something that she actually looked forward to doing a ton. It, it seemed like she would be ex excited. Everyone would naturally assume Danny Spiegel's got to be your favorite for the lift. And she's like, oh, you might be surprised. I don't know. Deadlift is probably my least favorite Wonder Max to do. So we'll see what she brings to the table. Now, she's got a listed deadlift at about 420. Again, I don't know when the last time she hit that 420 was. We don't often test the Wonder Max deadlift until it presents itself or a unique uh, you know, cycle that these athletes might be going through in their training, um, but it's it, it's still it's a it's a relevant number. And we know that Danny is traditionally one of the strongest, if not the strongest, athlete in the field. Tia Toomey, your overall leader with 420 points, but took a 12th place finish in the duel and saw her lead shrink from 60 points to 10 over Laura Horvath. Let's talk about the keys to an event like this and this structure of a max rep lift. Yeah, well, you know, structure is everything, how it presents itself. I really love the structure that it's presented as it builds in load. But the number one focus is they've got to pull with speed. I mentioned this, the audience can watch this as we've got four lifters out there at once. You want to see how quickly that bar travels from that mid-shin position to the complete lockout. If there's a hitch or a pause at the knee, you're already understanding the athlete's starting to create some trouble in trying to find a way to navigate the knee to get it up to their hip. The other one is that they need to stay tight. People will understand this cue from a coaching perspective. If you've been training in an affiliate and you pick up a heavy load off the ground, we've got to brace the musculature around our spine. The more firm that we can create uh, this unchanging block around our spine and our hips, the more advantageous we will be to making the power transfer from our legs to the barbell. Weight now moves to 315. Cutting for Iova, Shelby Neal, Kyra Milligan, and Danny Spiegel will be first up. Milligan is good, Spiegel's good. Shelby Neal's lift is good, and Cutting for Iova is through. You notice there, Shelby, again, she probably had the slowest lift of the four, and, and, and it showed in regards to how much strain or stress that lift created for her there at 315. Up next, Paige Powers, Elena Caratala, Emily Rolf, and Paige Semenza. All four women are good. Those were solid lifts. Paige Powers actually had a better lift there at 315 than she did at 305, which is a very good sign. She might have needed to simply wake her body up, prime her central nervous system with that first lift and be more sharp. Karatala and Emily Rolf both had a slower lift, so those are athletes we've got to keep our eye on as we make our way back to 325 on the next round, as that could be a, a load that is, is closer to their threshold. Next up, Danielle Brandon, Alex Kazan, and Manon Anganez. Bethany Flores would have been in the upper right hand part of your screen. All three women good at 315. Alex Kazan is one of the athletes that I would definitely have my eye on here. She's a strong puller. She's got longer upper body limbs. She's got longer arms, which helps her create very good leverage on the barbell from where it typically sits on athletes at the mid-shin position. And when you have that ad advantage from a limb length perspective, it allows you to create better leverage on the low. Three, two, one, Christine Colenbrand, Ariel Little, Lauren Fisher, and Gabby Gower. They are all through. I made easy work of that lift. Now final round of 315. Top four women in the overall standings, Emma Carey, Emma Lawson, Laura Horvath, and Tia Toomey. Four of the top five, Gabby McGowan comes in the place and carries it to fifth. Carey 
Very good. Doing good. good. Awesome. And Horvath, no problem. Now the weight moved to 325 pounds. Still 19 women alive here. This movement pattern that the deadlift asks of, of us as athletes is, is categorized as a hinge. Sean, they've hinged a lot today. <laughs> they did 120 power snatches. Yes, it was a lighter load, but at 65 pounds, it certainly added up over the accumulation of that volume uh, during the 10th inning. And then even specifically for the athletes that advanced deep into event five, the dual three, they had to do three sandbags to the teeter at 150 pounds every clip. So they're certainly feeling it in their posterior chain, and this lift is only waking up those muscles one more time here before they wrap up the day. The barbells have been loaded at 325 pounds, and we are set for round three. Colleen Freova, Shelby Neal, Kyra Milligan, and Danny Spiel to lead us off again. There's Kyra Milligan. Comes in in 18th place overall. Her best finish with a sixth place. In event two. Women. And we're going to make it her first appearance here as an individual at the Rogue Invitational. Let's replay a Toomey at 315. Tion Hurt deadlift. Has a great setup. Hips a little bit higher than other athletes in the setup and execution, but. Very smooth, very clean. Same with Laura Horvath here. She chooses to go the double overhand hook grip. And then we've got a mixed grip here from Lawson as well. Right hand over. You see the palm of her left hand where it's turned the opposite direction. These opposing forces help athletes hold on to that bar as it gets heavier and heavier, and of course, heavier. Now we move to the third barbell, 325. Ten seconds. Rayova, Neil, Milligan, Spiegel. No problem with Spiegel. Spiegel will get it. Neil is good. Rayova is good. Yeah, good lift for Shelby Neal there. Uh, you know, she has a, a bit of a squattier setup compared to a lot of the other athletes. Her being shorter in stature, she drops her butt a little bit lower, bending at the knees. And so as she navigates the knee, she has to shift her hip forward to finish the lift. And that forced her delta to be a touch slower, Sean. But I'll tell you what, for the body weight listed that we see for Shelby Neal, she's getting into some pretty heavy and substantial loads already. Now Paige Powers, Elena Caratala, Emily Rolfe, and Paige Semenza. Keep her out and Rolfe and Caratala, they struggled on the last bar. Well, that looks like it's moving. Wolf is not going to get it. She, and and Cartel also missed it. Yep. So two women out here. Elena Cartel, Asana Huya. So her best lift would be at 315. As will Emily Rawl. And again, with one of the keys being pull with speed, this is a great precursor to when an athlete is close to their threshold. It gets sticky, it gets slow, particularly around the knee. The next bar might be glued to the ground. Easy work for us. Dan is good. No manganese is good. Daniel Brandt. In the event, the two athletes fail on the same bar. We had a tiebreaker earlier. It was a jerry can carry for time, 70 pounds in each hand. That time will be your tiebreak time. And that lift there for Danielle Brandon, that, that's a pretty big lift for her from, from my understanding. She doesn't have a, lifted, a listed deadlift currently as a one rep max or all time best, but she looked very pleased with being successful at 325. Christine Kohlenbrander, Ariel Lowen, Lauren Fisher, and Gabby McGowan coming up next. Fisher's good. Lots of room left for all of those women there. Kohlenbrander, Lowen, Fisher, McGowan all stay alive. Down to our final four, Emma Carey, Emma Lawson, Laura Horvath, and Tia Toom. Thirty seconds in which to complete the lift. Three, two, one, and five. Oh, four 
women in this final round are good. And the weight will now move to 335. So we're down to 17 athletes as Elena Caratala and Emily Rolf bow out in that round. And Emma Carey had a bit of a struggle there on 325, getting it moved off the ground. Once she got it moving, once she broke that, that dead weight of the bar off the floor, it moved quite nicely, but it was, it was definitely a fight for her to get it moving. So that'll be a weight here at 335 where we gotta watch Emma Carey. That might have been her last successful deadlift. We'll see what she can do. Crew is out changing the weights. The equipment crew here all weekend long has done a fantastic job keeping this competition rolling as they always do. Without our volunteers, these competitions do not happen. I want to thank everybody who's volunteered their time and come out here and work so hard in some pretty hot and humid weather to keep this competition going. Now we move to 335 pounds. Back to the top of the order. Freyova, Neil, Milligan, and Spiegel to lead us off here. Seventeen women still left. When we get down to ten, we'll move into the two middle platforms. When we get down to five women, that's when we head to the single big platform there at home plate. That's right, and here's here's Elena. You'll notice that bar is just glued to the ground, and she knows that. that that's it. I've, I've met my match there for the night, and it's the same with Emily Rolf. Folks, when you miss a deadlift, the best thing that can happen is it's just glued to the ground, and you live to deadlift another day. Tia, with her mixed grip, takes a split second to get that bar moving, but once it starts to go vertically, it's moving with great speed all the way to the top. Now we are set for 335 pounds. Cutting Freyova, Shelby Neal, Kyra Milligan, and Danny Spiegel stepping up. Watching Shelby Neal specifically, that bar slowed down just a little bit on the, her last lift in the upper left-hand corner. Milligan and Spiegel, no problem. Freo was good. Shelby Neal fights through that. She did a great job there. All four women, women get through at 335. Paige Powers and Paige Semenza will be the next two up. And both of these women looked very strong even at 325. They're waving at each other from all the way across the floor, as it probably seems a little awkward that there's about 30 yards between them. And somehow the two athletes with the same first name wound up in the <laughs> same group. Paige Powers and Paige Semenza. Powers is good. Semenza taking her time. She is set up and she hits her lift. Both, both strong lifts for both both women there. Great body posture. Hips and shoulders rose together at the same rate till that barbell passed their knee and then they extended the hip to stand tall. It's exactly what you see. You want to see it's the way that we teach the deadlift to be executed. They, they look like there's still some room for them to continue to climb. Brandon Gazan and Manon Anganez up next. Three, two, Daniel Brandon, the one that we got to watch here at this particular weight. No problem for Kazan. And Nace rips that off the floor. Here's Daniel Brandon. Brandon hits it. And she's smiling again walking back, so she's, she's pleased to continue to stay in the fight. Danielle Brandon, 12th place overall, but coming off her best finish of the competition, she took fifth place in the duel. Now Christine Kohlenbrander, Ariel Lowen, Lauren Fisher, and Gabby McGowan back to the bar. This is five pounds over the list of PR that Ariel Lowen has published. Fisher's good. McGowan's good. Kohlenbrander. They smoked it. Ariel looked really good at 335. Four women advance. Now to the final round. Emma Carey, Emma Lawson, Laura Horvath, and Tia Toomey. Emma Carey on the left, and, and what I would consider lane one is the one to, that, that struggled on the last bar the most of this grouping. She'll be in the bottom left-hand part of your screen, Emma Carey. Can she fight through this, get that bar up off the ground. She got it. 
Wow. And Carey fights through that. Lawson, Horvath, and Toomey are good as well. Weight will now move to 345 pounds. Still 17 women alive here. Tia still moving that bar with great speed and also no belt. She's out there with, with no belt on, no bracing around her abdominal or her low back. It's very common to see most of, if not all of these athletes wearing some type of back support and she's choosing not to wear one. And it could be something, just a simple decision. She has better awareness, better bracing ability in the hinge position to protect her spine without it there um, versus other women are util use, utilizing it as a catalyst to brace against. Weight going up to 345, 17 women left. Looks like we got to clean off a bar a little bit here. We're getting to some weights now where people are starting to struggle a little bit here. They are, the refs become a little slower, a little more grindy. If you notice though, Danielle does a great job, again, keeping the relationship between her hips and shoulders the same until the bar passes her knees, and then she's able to extend her hips. There's a little hitch there, but she got the work done. Now, Emma, you'll watch, it almost takes a full second for her to get that bar to nudge, and as it does, it moves slowly. A few hitches to get it all the way to the upright position. What a fight by Emma Carey. 345 pounds on the barbell now. Back to the top of the order. Karine Freyova, Shelby Neal, Kyra Milligan, and Danny Spiegel back up. Still plenty of time before we reset here. There is Danny Spiegel talking things over with Paige Semenza. Spiegel managed to gain four spots in the overall standing. She moved up from 17th to 13th, courtesy of her event win in the duel. And Sean, with her history, I mean, are we, we could be, be right here on, on the brink of her winning back-to-back -back events at, at the Rogue Invitational. Said she wasn't too excited about the deadlift, but she's, she's still super strong. We saw that in the duel, picking up those 150-pound sandbags and tossing those things around. Maybe she just wanted the rest of the field to forget. You know, hey, don't worry about me. I don't like the deadlift. She's not fooling anybody. Right over Neil Milligan and Spiegel at 345. That was no problem for either Milligan or Spiegel. Right over through that and Shelby Neal wow. continues to stay alive. That's a great fight from Shelby Neal. 19th place overall. Best finish was a 10th in event two. We talk about how important bracing is. That was, that was the second key to success here, is stay tight. And athletes, it's really essential. The heavier the weight gets, the longer it takes them to stand. They've got to be able to sustain a static trunk because that weight wants to go with gravity down to the floor. Paige Semenza and Paige Powers. Powers on the left, she is good. Semenza on the right, who's taking her time to get started here. And Semenza hits her lift. And Paige Semenza has done a great job at making every lift look the same thus far. I don't think the speed has changed, even though the weight has gone up. The, the, the earlier reps weren't particularly fast, but they haven't really slowed down at all. Up next, Danielle Brandon, Alex Gazan, and Manon Anganez. Keep an eye on Danielle Brandon. Put up a good fight to get through 335. See what she can do with 345 pounds here. Anganez and Kazan are good. And now Brandon for her attempt. And Danielle Brandon will not be able to get through that. Brandon will be eliminated. Her best lift, 335 pounds. And we're down to 16 athletes. And I think Danielle will be overall pleased with that. Maybe not in relation to the field. Of course, she's going to say, I got to get stronger. I got to be better. But in, in relation to where she's at in her strength journey, I think that's a step in the right direction. Christine Kohlenbrander, Ariel Lowen, Lauren Fisher, and Gabby Magawa. Fisher is good. Magawa, Lowen, and Kohlenbrander all get through. 
Team Colon Brander makes these weights look... It looks like she's about to power clean it. I'm going to be honest. The <laughs> speed probably that could. She, the speed she builds off the floor, I'm like, oh, wow. You could probably just jump it to your shoulders. Final four athletes coming up next. Emma Carey, Emma Lawson, Laura Horvath, and Tia Toomey. Watching Emma Carey here on the left-hand part of your screen. She gets right to work. Toomey's good. Horvath is good. Carey missed the attempt. Emma Lawson is through. And Emma Carey has plenty of time here to make another attempt. 15 seconds left for Emma Carey. Crowd getting behind her. She's going to pull on the bar. It ain't having a good day. Not going to happen for Emma Carey. So she will bow out. We're down to 15. So now we go to 355 pounds. So Emma Carey came in in fifth place overall. She was only 20 points up on Ariel Lowen, who was still alive here. And that was a heck of a fight that she put up, Emma Carey, to get that last lift at 335. And when you do that, it just drains you of so much energy. Even if you think 345 is potentially there, it, it cost her so much to make that 335-pound lift that the fatigue just continues to add up, and it makes it tougher and tougher to go up through the ladder. One more look at Emma Carey. Got it to budge, but just couldn't get it past the point where she could really start to get to work. Meanwhile, Emma Lawson, she hit her lift at 345. Yeah, and it looked good. She really moves well through the knee, and then there's a little bit of hesitation through the mid-thigh, but she is smooth off the ground. No problem for Tia Toomey. Fifteen women remain. Moving up to our sixth round here at 355 pounds. Treova, Neal, Milligan, and Spiegel up next. And Shelby Neal in the red top and black pants for the right center of your screen has been putting up a really good fights here as these weights have gotten heavier. One of the smaller athletes in the field. Yeah, if she keeps all things considered the same, I think she's got a great chance to stand this up. Spiegel and Milligan continue to just tear through these barbells. Trail is good. Neil's fighting her way through it, and she will have it. All four women in round one. They stay alive at 355. Great lift for Shelby Neal. I mean, 365 could be in there tonight if she's still feeling good. Paige Powers and Paige Semenza up next. Both these women still look strong on that last bar. Powers getting it to move, and Paige Powers is through. Paige Semenza taking her time. She's got to make an attempt. There's attempt number one at 355 for Semenza, and that is good. The pages live to deadlift another round. Paige Powers, it really slowed down tremendously for her. You noticed it took about a full second again. She engaged the bar, took the slack out. There was a pause. Then it started to go upward. That might be one of the last lifts we see her do tonight, just from the way that her body had to maneuver in order to, to make that lift successful. Alex Gazan and Manolina Engane is up next at 355. Gazan mauls that. Engane is as good as well. Eight women remain. Make that seven women remain. Two rounds left. Colin Brander, Lowen, Fisher, and Magawa will be up next. Lowen in the upper left hand part of your screen. Colin Brander, bottom left. Magawa, bottom right. Lauren Fisher, top right. Fisher gets through. Gawa is good. Colin Brander and Lowen 
fails that rep and she's going to call. Ariel Lowen bows out. Her last successful lift, 345 pounds. Now we're down to 14. Final three women coming up next. Emma Lawson, Laura Horvath, and Tia Toomey. Lawson, Horvath, and Toomey stepping up to 355. Final round here at this weight. No problem for Toomey. Horvath is good. And Lawson is good. Great lift for Lawson. Now Lawson, the way she executed that lift again, it comes past her knee very smoothly. And then she struggles a little bit more at the lockout. It's something similar to what we saw Ariel Lowen do two bars ago, which led to her bowing out in this particular lift. So it's one of those things where Emma Lawson is going to have to continue to keep that speed that she has as the bar passes her knee in order to lock out if she wants to hit 365 on the next bar. Moving up to 365 pounds now, 14 women remain. And here was Ariel Lowen on the miss. Is she, Sean, she is like a fraction of a centimeter away from making this lift. If she gets that thing a little bit higher onto her thigh, she has got an opportunity to hitch back and stand it up. And then this is the difference between what Ariel did and Lawson did. Lawson has the same slowing there, but she was able to pull her shoulders behind the bar and shift her hips forward to reach that fully extended position. What a great finish there by Emma Lawson. Now 14 women are left. When we get down to 10, again, we'll move into the two middle platforms, the final five will then lift on the one platform there on home plate at Dell Diamond Stadium. We move back to the top of the order. Karin Freova, Shelby Neal, Kyra Milligan, and Danny Spiegel at 365 pounds. Danny Spiegel put on a show last year in that log press event. Hoping for a similar result tonight. This is going to be one of those weights that's going to really start to create some separation from the strongest within this group, uh, from, from those that are probably in PR territory. So there's going to be a, a, a significant amount of women that still continue on, but I think this bar and the next bar are going to be uh, some big separators here in the group. Rayova, Neil, Milligan, and Spiegel up first at 365 pounds. Milligan moving that easily, as is Danny Spiegel. Shelby Neal starting to struggle. She'll miss her first attempt. Rayova is through. We'll see if Neal makes a second attempt. She's got about 15 seconds to go here. Crowd behind Shelby Neal, 365 second attempt. Not able to get. Shelby, but she's pumped about her effort, and so are we. I mean, what, what a great what a great showing for her all the way through that 355-pound barbell. Now 13 women are left. Shelby Neal will leave with a last successful lift at 355 pounds. Great result for Shelby. That's Paige Powers and Paige Semenza. Powers with a no rep. Here's Semenza. Takes that extra time to get set up. And Paige Semenza will have it. Second attempt for Powers. She's not going to get that to go, so now Powers is done. We're down to 12. Alex Kazan and Manella Anganese stepping up next to 365 pounds. And everybody watching who has had the experience of building to a heavy deadlift, you know that feeling. One lift feels great, and the next one just is glued to the ground. No problem for Alex Kazan. And Ona Anganez is good as well. Wow. Ona Anganez is a former Belgian champion in weightlifting at 69 kilos. Has her eyes on possibly qualifying for the 2024 Olympics. Now we move to Christine Kohlenbrander, Lauren Fisher, and Gabby Magawa. 365 pounds here. We're down to 12 women. Fisher is good. 
Colin Brander and Magawa all getting through 365 pounds. Lauren Fisher moved that 365 way faster than I expected, Sean. Like this is this is a great if we, we want to talk about a, a pure strength test, this is a great one to come uh, for Lauren Fisher specifically. She's a strong athlete, of course, but this is going to be one that, that really, really leans in her favor. Final round, Emma Lawson, Laura Horvath, and Tia Toomey. Keep an eye on Emma Lawson as she really had to fight that last 355-pound barbell. Toomey and Horvath are good. Lawson. That's the spot. She got a hit forward. Hit. She got it. And we'll get it. Pitches her way through it, and Emma Lawson stays alive. She might not even be sure how at that point. That flip of the hair and the smile. <laughs> how to how to get that? Somewhere Rob Kearney is smiling. That's a strongman athlete who, if you watch him deadlift, he does that same same thing. He'll get his hips under. He hitches it up, and it is effective. And Emma Lawson uses it to move past 365 pounds. Toomey out there with the mixed grip, beltless. Showing off that mom's strength. Made it still look, still look easy at 365 for her. Horvath double overhand, hook grip. Not even one slightly difference about, about that compared to the 335 and 345 lighter weights. And then Emma Lawson makes great work through the knee and then it hits a stick point, but she finds a way to get those hips extended at the top. The rep was good. We are through 365 pounds. Moving up to 375 pounds next. 12 women remain. See on the right side of your screen, the women who have been eliminated so far, Neil, Powers, Lowen, Brandon, Carey, Caratala, Rolf, and Flores. Now things starting to get serious here. 375 pounds out there on the bar. 12 athletes remain. This could be the final round where we are lifting on all four platforms. Yeah, this is where the rubber's gonna meet the road for, for several of these ladies. We saw, you know, a few bow out on the 365 bar. But now we're into some heavy, heavy territory. Freyova had a bit of a sticking point on that last lift. This will be big if she can make this one happen. Freyova, Milligan, and Spiegel at 375. Spiegel, no problem. Milligan is through. Freyova not able to budge that. Now we are down to 11. Just knows she kind of packs it in. She could have. She had plenty of time to make another attempt. But as an athlete, it's important to to to, to feel this out. Have that have that awareness. Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? She knows that her body's probably tired. Her central nervous system is really fatigued, and it's better to come back and be ready to perform tomorrow. Paige Semenza will be out there on her own now. Looking to get the crowd behind her here. 375. For Paige Semenza. A hockey player from Ohio State. And she shoots, she scores. Semenza gets through 375. Great, great lift. She has certainly spent some time with power lifters or amidst other power lifters that, that, that specialize in the deadlift. From the way she sets her belt to the way she braces her midline, addresses the bar, pauses, takes her time. It's textbook. Alex Kazan and Manon Anganez, and the two of them had no problem with those barbells. Just warming up for those ladies. Colin Brander, Fisher, and Magawa coming up next. Eleven women remain here. Are slowed down a little bit on that last lift at 365 for Gabby Magawa, so we'll see how well 375 moves. I think she can still make it, but it's just going to take a little bit more out of her. Fisher's good at 375. 
Cole Branders through, and Magawa stays alive. Move into the final round now. Emma Lawson, Laura Horvath, and Tia Toomey. And Emma Lawson really had to fight at 365. We'll see what she has left here for a lift at 375 pounds. Don't expect her to make it through this round, but I know she's going to give it a good fight. She's going to get that bar off the ground. It's just all about what happens as she approaches the knee and gets it around there. Here we go. Toomey's good. Horvath is good. Now Lawson. Take a second to get reset. Pitching up the belt. The crowd trying to earn her on here. So 375. Lawson. And Emma Lawson's fighting it. And just kind of get past the knees. That was really close. Very close for her, Sean, it was. And you wonder, you know, the way she addressed the bar, maybe it was a touch too early on the first attempt because she, she didn't even get as far as she did on that second. So had she, she prepped and primed just a little bit and not made the two attempts, just to turn it into one, she might have been, might have been fruitful or at least closer. And able to laugh about it, but man, that was close for Emma Lawson. If she got it above the knee, she could try and hitch that thing up. Yeah, it's not, it's not common that we see a lot of athletes fail at that point in their deadlift, but it's certainly something that can happen. She puts a great effort. She's got a great setup. Hips and shoulders rise together up into that point, but she doesn't have the ability to finish the lift and shift her hips forward and pull those shoulders back. It's a sticking point. She can train this in her training and build through that plateau. Page them into smooth all the way up from the ground. Great braced posture, and that's simply a textbook deadlift. We are now down to 10 women, so we will move to the two inside platforms. And when we get down to five, we move to the big platform, and that's when it really gets fun. Going to go up to 380 pounds next. Make five-pound jumps from here on out until we have a winner. And again, in the event that two athletes are eliminated on the same barbell, their time in the jerry can carry for time is what will be the, used as a tie break. They had two 70 pound jerry cans that they had to carry across the field earlier. That is their tie break time for this event. Athletes on the left still alive. Athletes on the right, they're the ones who have been eliminated. There's some good battles shaping up here now as we move to the two inside platforms. Milligan Spiegel and Anganese have all looked really good here, as has Lauren Fisher. And we're already seven singles into this event. So these athletes started their lifts at 305 and made their way all the way through 375. We're beginning our eighth lift. 380 pounds now on the barbell. Alex Kazan, Christine Colin Brander, and Danny Spiegel. It's going to be Milligan and Spiegel up first. Three eighty. Three eighty. Texas big. <laughs> We're getting there. I don't imagine that either of these women are gonna have a real problem with this weight based on what we saw from them in the earlier bars. Here we go. Milligan and Spiegel belting up. Three eighty for each. Milligan is good. And Spiegel will make that. Slight, slight hitch there from Danny. A little bit of a pause at the bottom from Kyra, right? It looks like what we're starting to see is each athlete might have a little bit of a different sticking point when they reach that point, but both were successful there. Paige Semenza and Alex Gazan up next. You 
No Alex is fast off the floor to extension. Paige takes her time. And Semenza's not even going to make an attempt. Kazan's through. Semenza bows out at 375. Should be good enough for a 10th place finish in this event. Yeah, great performance there by Paige Simmons. And it's it's a beautiful thing to, to have athletes express this self-awareness where they just kind of know, hey, again, I'm, I'm throwing in the towel. I think this is a great example to CrossFitters across the world. <laughs> when we walk in with our ego to the affiliate, we want to do a one rep max deadlift. It's important to film yourself. Have your coach nearby. Let them know when your form is breaking down and, and shut it down. Live the deadlift another day. It's a fruitful lift. We just got to be healthy enough to do it all the time. And on Enganese and Christine Colebrand. Colebrand is good. Enganese is going to hitch that up, and that will count. The judge telling her to, I think, block out the, the hips there, and she was able to do it before the barbell came down. Yeah, she did a great job finishing. It was it was it was slightly. She had a lockout on one side and not on the other, so she did a good job showing the judge what he needed to see there in that moment. But it certainly took a lot out of her because it extended the time for her to hold that weight in her hand. So that could be something that affects her here at the next weight. Now Lauren Fisher and Gabby Magawa. Fisher rips that off the ground, and now Magawa at 380, not going to get it. Crowd getting behind Gabby McGowan. She gets set up for yeah. one more attempt. If she can get this past her knee, Sean, she can finish it. McGowan not able to get it. Now we are down to eight women. McGowan now is out at 375 as well, failing to lift 380. And now our two. Overall leaders here. Chia Toomey in first place, Little Horoff in second. And both of them will make 380. Eight women are left. We move up to 385 pounds. Three, two, one. The weights get changed. Take a look at Manon Anganese. Yeah, and you notice she puts up a tremendous fight to lock out. You notice her left side still lagging a little bit, and then she's got to lock that leg out in order to make it count. Judge gives her a down signal to cure that the lift was good. Laura Horvath, on the other hand, lifts 380 the same way she lifts 305, fast. <laughs> like you said, may have well just <laughs> kept going and power cleaned that thing because looked pretty light for Laura Horvath. We are now down to eight women as Semenza and Magawa. Both fail at 380. Milligan, Spiegel, Gazan, Anganese, Kolenbrander, Fisher, Horvath, and Toomey. All still alive. We move up to 385 pounds. Milligan and Spiegel will be the first two out. Kyra Milligan looking for her best finish of the competition, although she did take sixth place in event number two. Since then, everything's been 15th or lower. She will definitely improve on that here in event six. And yeah, we've talked about this with Kyra earlier in this week, Sean, but we haven't had an opportunity to see her compete individually at a very high level much but we saw her at the CrossFit Games last year on the CrossFit Mayhem team. And uh, this is gonna be great experience for her. We know from the data that we've seen and from hearing from her coaches, any strength test is certainly something she looks forward to. So this is just an opportunity for her to really rack up some points against the field. Milligan and Spiegel are ready. 385 on the bar. Milligan is good. And Spiegel is good as well. Alex Kazan will lift all by herself. Aziz as Laura 
Horvath made that last 380 lift. Alex Kazan made it look equally as, as easy. So I don't I don't know that 385 will present any kind of problem to her at this point either. Alex Kazan in ninth place overall. After her event win in event two, she came up with a 16th and a 17th. Got a fourth in the duel. And that is no problem for Alex Kazan at 385. Christine Kohlenbrander and Manon Anganez are up next. Now, Manon Anganez is the one that we watched fight, fight really hard for that 380. 385 is here, but it's got to be a much cleaner lift. She won't be able to have that same amount of time under tension and get away with, with having to uh, take the pause to show her judge what they need to see at the top. So she's got to get there and get there smoothly. 385 for Anganez and Christine Kohlenbrander. Kohlenbrander is no good and Anganez is no good. Two more women have dropped out now. Sean, I gotta tell you, I'm surprised there to see Kohlenbrander bow out so soon. I, I mean, there wasn't even a hesitation at 380. It what, didn't even, there was not even a hitch there. So to see her bow out at that barbell tells me that she, she's really feeling it. The fatigue is built up for her. Crowd behind Lauren Fisher, who's had a great competition so far. Eighth place overall. Best finish was a seventh. As she is unable to get through 385 pounds. We're down to five women, so this is now the last time we'll be lifting two at a time. Horvath and Toomey up next. 385 pounds for the two of them. Both have listed deadlifts of over 400 pounds. Horvath and Toomey. Toomey coming into this event with a 10-point lead over Horvath. Horvath was able to carve 50 points off of Toomey's cushion during the duel. And wow. both of them are good. Five women remain, and we will move to the single platform. Kyra Milligan, Danny Spiegel, Alex Gazan, Laura Horvath, and Tia Toomey advancing to the 390-pound bar. All right, now here's what we're seeing from Laura at 385. It's smooth once she gets it off the floor. No problem as the bar passes her knees. Tia equally has a great brace, and the bar moves quickly to her mid-thigh, and then there's a slight hitch there as she shifts her hips forward to get her shoulders behind the bar. That is the area that we're going to want to watch on her deadlift in the lifts to come where the bar starts to slow. As it won't be off the floor, it will be as the bar passes her knees will start to be some of the precursing moments to whether the lift's going to happen or not. Now down to the final five women, and we move to that home plate platform. And the weight going up to 390. Milligan, Spiegel, Gazan, Horvath, and Toomey all still alive here. And this is where it gets fun. This is. This is. Now we got one platform under the lights here at Dell Diamond Stadium, packed house. Here we go. The crowd will turn up for every lift now. Like, they know they're, who they're watching, one person at a time. It's, it, this is where it gets very electric, and that adrenaline boost actually adds another, another 10 levels to the experience when you're the athlete out there on the platform with, with something going on like this. And of course, it's the last barbell, so you got to make it look cool. Wrapped in the Texas State flag here. Wow. Pulls all the stops, man. That, that is that is amazing. That's a great bar. Who gets to take that home? Maybe the winner. I thought it was. I thought it was. I thought I heard it was the commentary team. I would. I, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what I heard. Like, man, I could really use a nice deadlift bar. <laughs> Milligan chalking up that barbell. She will be. It looks to be the first woman out. It'll be her, then Spiegel, then Gazan, then Horvath, and Toomey. 390 now on the bar. Milligan takes center stage here. Yeah, 
And they're self-focused. She has looked really good as these weights have gotten heavier. She has looked really good. And this is the first time, <laughs> okay, there we see. We see her break the, break the ice with a little bit of a smile, but this is the most focused and most dialed in that she's been to address any barbell up into this point. So it tells me that we're getting up towards some of those weights that are threshold for her. Sean, I didn't have a listed 1RM, but I did see that she did 330 for 10 before. That'll do. 390 for Milligan. And she will get it. Wow. Now Danny Spiegel stepping up to 390 pounds. Spiegel guaranteeing, guaranteeing herself, pardon me, another top five finish to follow up her win earlier today in the duel. Danny's, Danny's last lift started to slow right around that mid thigh area. She gives the bar a couple hitches in order to lock it out. It takes a half second to get it off the floor, but that, that, lift, that area of the lift is pretty clean for her up into this point, so, so let's see how she does with 390. Keep place are going to crack the top 10 here. And 390. Will count for Danny Spiegel. Worked her way through that sticking point nicely. She knows where it is. She probably knows uh, of that area of weakness for herself. She can get it past her knee. She knows she's got to finish the lift by pulling those shoulders back and hiking that hip forward. Alex Gazan, third woman to attempt 390 pounds here. Oh, come on. That is too easy for Alex Gazan. Great lift. Might need to get some more weights out to home plate for Alex Gazan. That was impressive. Laura Horvath stepping up to 390 pounds as Tia Toomey looks on. Laura with her laser focus, we're very used to. And at 385, I gotta say, she moved it like it was 305. Just every bar has continued to look the same up until this point. 390, current fittest woman on earth. And that is good. For Laura Horvath. Tia Toomey to close out this round at 390 pounds. Time rope invitational champion, six time fittest woman on earth, first attempt at 390. And she has it. All five women advance to 395 pounds. Great lift there by Tia. Again. Three, two, beltless. one, Flex right, that strong core that she's continue, continuing to build. Spiegel almost floated to her toes a little bit on that. If the next rep, she can stay back in the midfoot and keep her heels down. It's going to help her a ton. I'm surprised she was able to recoup and save that. Laura Horvath consistent this entire time. 390 looking a touch slower than 385, though, so she's showing some of those humanistic traits. And then Tia Claire Toomey, mixed grip, a little hitch there at the mid thigh to the lockout, but still high quality off the floor. All five women staying alive through the 390 pound bar. And we move on to 395 pounds. And we're gonna make five pound jumps until we have a winner here. Ira Milligan will be up first. And Milligan has guaranteed herself her best finish of the competition. The worst she can do is fifth here in this event. 
395 for Milligan. And that is good for Kyra Milligan. Amazing lift for her. She, she made that look the same as she did 390. I expected a little bit slow, a little bit more slowing to happen as the bar passed her knee, but she did a, she did a fantastic job. Now Danny Spiegel will be up next. One of the big cues for me, Sean, and every athlete that I get an opportunity to work with when you address the bar for a deadlift is that you want to squeeze it as tight as you can. You want to, you want to make sure that no matter what grip you choose, that you're putting as much power into that bar as possible with your grip to make it sure. Spiegel will hitch that up and is good. Danny Spiegel moving on. That was, a, that was a better, more sound lift than her last attempt. So that, that that's good. That's a good sign for Danny. She's still got some room left before she hits her threshold, and I think she was she was much better there at staying flat-footed throughout, even with that hitch in the middle. She didn't come to her toes as much. Now Alex Gazan, who tore through the 390-pound barbell. Let's see what this one looks like at 395. And I'd say that looks just fine. Yep. <laughs> wow. Yep. Sure does. Alex Kazan threw 395 with no problem. Laura Horvath will be the next lifter. And even though that last lift slowed, as you mentioned, the form looked the same as it has throughout this event. That's right. She pulls the bar off the floor very sound. She addresses the bar, shins close to the bar, shoulders activated, keeps it close to her legs throughout the pull, hips and shoulders rise together, extends the hip at the top. 395 is good. More Horvath, and now Tia Toomey to close out this round at 395. This lift, you'll probably see a slight, slight rounding of her upper back as before the bar starts to leave the ground here. But she's going to brace through her midline and through her mid back to make sure that, that nothing changes there. Crowd behind Tia Toomey, 395. And that is good. And all five women now move up to 400 pounds. off here who, who who can deadlift all night that's what that's what they keep walking back to the line to say hey I'm, I could do I can do this all night <laughs> I'm sure the fans will have no problem with that everyone loves watching big weights going up under the lights let's start with Kyra Milligan first woman out yeah and she's done a great job lift after lift Sean she's executing at a very high level we know she was looking forward to the max lift probably no matter what it was and then Alex Gazan the, the, the woman that we talked about at the start of this event, we talk about anthropometrics, we talk, we're, we're talking about limb length in relation to your torso, in relation to your leg length, and she's kind of built a deadlift. Tia Claire Toomey doing Tia Claire Toomey things, just being undeniable in regards to the way that she presents her fitness. No matter what the test is, she's gonna be a threat to come out on top no matter what. 400 pounds, now on the barbell. Five women remain. And Kyra Milligan is set to kick things off here. Four hundred is one of those benchmark numbers, and if you've ever maxed out any lift, if you, if, you, if you're watching, if you're listening, you know sometimes numbers get in your head. So mm -hmm. it's like you might not know what's on there. You just go pick it up because you're naive. Well, how many so, times you hear that when someone says, "Yeah, I didn't even know how much was on the bar, and I lifted it. it turned out to be a PR." That's right. So not only is this a heavy weight, but you got to wonder, is 400 pounds one of those numbers for some of these women where they're like, oh, can't I can't lift it? Kyra Milligan at 400. She's got it. Stand it up. Oh, so close for Milligan. So close. What a great effort. 395 pounds is going to be her best lift. This will be her best finish of the competition. I thought she had it. Three. 
one rotate. All right, here we go. Dixie Spiegel top test. 400 pounds. Three, Here's Danny two, Spiegel. One. Four hundred pounds. Four women, women left, and Spiegel is going to get that. John, I think she's getting stronger. I think she's getting stronger. The last three bars have almost improved from what that fourth bar uh, was. Spiegel's through four hundred. Now Alex Gazan is coming up. This is, these are the listed PRs for these top three women. Spiegel at 420, Toomey at 415, Horvath at 405. Alex Gazan at 400. No problem for Alex Gazan. It's amazing. Wow. She does such a great job, Shauna, keeping the bar close to her legs, no matter where it is on its journey up. A lot of times athletes drive their hips up, the knee creeps back, and then the bar's hanging out in space. Alex does an amazing job at keeping her shoulders active, which means her lats pulled back and together to keep that bar really close to her spine. That's what keeps her safe, but also that's what keeps the weight traveling vertically. Laura Horvath, five pounds under, under her listed PR. And she will make it. And again, the form looks the same. Maybe the speed doesn't, that's right. but the form certainly does. That's right, and that's what, that's what you want to have no matter what. In order to keep yourself safe and continuing to perform at a very high level, you want to change as little as possible and just rely on sound mechanics, folks. Stick to the basics, stick to the basics. Now Toomey, close things out here at 400 pounds. And Tia Toomey will get it. Four women left. We're going up to 405. This will be the 14th barbell that these women will attempt. As we move up to 405 pounds, four women remain. Spiegel, Gazan, Toomey, and Horvath. Kyra putting up a great effort. That bar made it all the way past her knees into her thigh position, but she just couldn't reach extension at the very top. Chose to bow out. Great effort by her. Spiegel, on the other hand, pulling with almost more speed and ferocity at 400 pounds, and we saw her pull 395. And then Tia on this lift, a little slower off the floor, knows just at the right time, though, when to hitch forward to pull the bar back and keep it closer in order to finish and have success again. Just a champ doing champ things. 405 now on the barbell. We have updated scores for the weight. And remember, women who bowed out at the same barbell, their time in the jerry can carry for time, that will be used as the tie break. Spiegel, Gazan, Horvath, and Toomey still lifting. The 14th round here, 14th barbell that they have lifted. Yeah, it's not just the measure of strength here, folks. This is the measure of accumulated volume and fatigue that these women have endured all day long, but through the previous 14 lifts. Keep the rest consistent here. Since this would have been Milligan's spot, the clock is going to start, but no one's going to lift. Which is needed, I would say. I think that's a, that's a very, uh, very wise way to approach such an event. It really allows us to see the most from these athletes instead of shortening the, the time of recovery between lifts. Danny Spiegel will be up first at 4.05. 
15 pounds away from the listed PR of 4.20. Danny Spiegel at 4.05. And she will get it. Alex Gazan will be up next. for Kazan. And she gets it. No problem. Still looking very clean for Alex. Very clean lifts all the way through the night. If that's truly a PR, very impressive, impressively done for her. 405 for Alex Kazan. That's a PR for her. And now Laura Horvath at 405. has it. Laura Horvath, 4.05, and now Tia Toomey is up next. Still four women remain. Toomey will be the last to go here at this weight. It's just like we've said time and time again for Laura. Textbook technique, just a little bit slower than the lift before, but she's staying in the fight. She's doing a great job at it. Got to bring some fight to this lift here. Still under her lift of PR of 415 pounds. Again, this is the 14th time that she has lifted in this event. Four five is not going to go for Toomey. She will take fourth. Now this is big for Horvath because Horvath can erase the remainder of that deficit and overtake Toomey for the top spot on the leaderboard. Three women are left. And Toomey will take fourth place. That should be good for 85 points. Spiegel at 405. Making it look no different than she did 390. The last three bars, I'm telling you, she's just getting stronger. She's finding a groove. Alex Azan, again, killing it with the bar pad, keeping it close, tracing her legs with the bar each and every repetition. And then Laura Horvath, no change to her technique throughout. Just a touch slower to get that weight moving every time. 405, it doesn't look like that's slowing her down. And still going with that double overhand yep. grip. As Danny Spiegel, Alex Gazan, and Laura Horvath are still alive here as we go up to 410 pounds. Yeah, I really like the double overhand grip with the with the hook grip intact. It has some great carryover to the cleans and other lifts that we do from the floor in our methodology in the sport. Uh, you know, it, it also creates a little bit more of a symmetrical setup. When we turn one hand under, supinate the grip, it tends to kind of drop that shoulder on that side. And we do a lot of pulling, we do a lot of hinging from the ground. So th those reps add up. And when you think about keeping the body as symmetrical as possible, or as even as possible, it's something that a lot of athletes should consider. Danny Spiegel kind of jumped the gun here. And they're trying to keep the rest the same round to round. This is, would be where Kyra Milligan, if she were still in, would be lifting. Now, Spiegel will step up to the 410 pound barbell here. Four ten for Spiegel. And that will count. Yeah, nope, I mean, wow.
the way she's able to get through her hitch, how explosive the change of speed is from just below the knee to above the knee in order to surpass that weak port portion of her is impressive. The one thing she's got to watch as the weight gets heavy is not getting out of control with the hitch. You can throw her forward a bit and eventually lead to her missing a lift if she's not careful. Now Alex Kazan continuing to make heavyweight look light. She's through 410. Textbook form, rep after rep continues to look the same. A little slower there on that pull. Very impressive by Alex. More we'll about the closings out here. At 410 pounds. And the defending Rogue Invitational Champion will make that lift. Let's go up to 415. Let's keep this party going. I'm here for the night, says Laura. Hey, and I'll tell you what, the beauty in that is that she literally cracked a smile, Sean, just as that bar sweeped past a point in her pool where it was, it was clearly very familiar to her. Like, she was like, hey, if I can just come on, just let me fight through this point. And I, she knew she had it locked up. That was fun. Spiegel, Kazan, and Horvath, all good at all, 410. And all different lifting techniques. Spiegel, a little bit of rounding in her upper back in the setup position. Great speed past the knee and then the little hitch at the thigh. Still gets it. Alex Kazan consistent off the floor from rep one all the way through rep 15 here, rep 16 here. And uh, Laura Horvath, textbook, look at the smile break across her face. She almost couldn't hold it in there as the bar passed her knee. She knew she had it there. Great lift and execution. We live to lift another barbell tonight. And we go into round 16. We're deep into the extra innings here. 15 being loaded onto that bar. Spiegel, Gazan, and Horvath, your final three women left. We still have the men to go, and they are just now walking out onto the field down the third base line. There's still plenty of big weights to go up here. Plenty, plenty of big weights. Spiegel and Gazan talking things over. Little Horvath is. not lose track of the fact that Laura Horvath could take the overall lead. She had a 10-point deficit that she needed to make up yep. on Toomey. As long as she finishes second or better here in this event, with Toomey finishing in fourth, they could be tied going into the final day. Yep. So, so Tia's sitting back, and she's hoping from her perspective, hey, come on, Danny. Come on, Alex. Keep pulling through for me. Keep this bar getting heavier. Hopefully, Laura bows out. Again, keeping the rest consistent to keep things fair here. As Danny Spiegel is getting set up to make an attempt at 415 pounds. The 16th barbell that she will attempt. Spiegel, 4.15. Cinches up the belt. And Danny Spiegel hitching it up. And it will count. 4.15 is good. I don't know why she said she wasn't looking forward to this, because she's doing extremely well. Hey, listen, the deadlift might not be her favorite lift, but it is certainly still one of her strongest lifts. And we know that she's familiar with the spotlight and with that center stage down there at the Rogue Invitational on a Saturday night. So <laughs> we're not surprised. Alex Gazan trying to get the crowd behind her. 4.15 for Gazan is good. <laughs> I mean, oh. 
Just impressive. Now here's Laura Horvath to close things out at 4.15. Laser focus here for Laura. She's, she's made a belt switch. So she went and got her, her, her leather belt where it has fixed distances, probably a little bit more firm on her torso here, easier to brace into. Laura Horvath, 415. Past the knees and Horvath has it. That might be the most impressive deadlift we've seen here tonight, honestly. The, the time that it took and the focus that she was able to sustain a firm body posture, no rounding of her back, and fight through those sticking points that started to present themselves, that is impressive. We go into the 17th barbell now. 420 pounds. This is Spiegel's listed PR coming up here. Kazan is just setting new PRs every time she rips that thing off the ground. Take a look at Danny Spiegel here. Again, fast off the ground. A couple hitches, maybe an extra one there that we've seen in previous barbells. But still, I mean, the speed that she gets that bar to her mid-thigh position, Sean, is just straight up impressive. And Alex Kazan just showing up at every barbell, every lift looking the same, a touch slower. But still making it happen, and Laura, with definitely her slowest lift of the night, but that doesn't take away the quality of it. Every lift has looked the same for her as well. 420 being loaded onto the barbell here. Again, the 17th barbell that these women have attempted. Danny Spiegel's had herself a great day so far. 13th place overall, but she moved up four spots after her win in the duel. And now another top three finish here could put her into the top 10. She was only 35 points back of Manon Anganes for 10th. Alex Kazan came in in ninth place overall. She's looking to move up the overall standings, and Laura Horvath is possibly looking to move into the overall lead. Here we go. Spiegel at 420. No problem getting it to her knees, and now can she hitch it up? She can indeed, and Danny Spiegel will hit 420. Wow. Great lift there by Danny. She's definitely getting towards the end of her threshold. You can tell that lift took a lot more out of her than the previous ones that we've seen here tonight. Form didn't look that much different, but you can just tell the time under tension, the amount of, of hitches that it took for her to get that bar up to the top of her thigh to an open hip. It definitely cost her a bit more energy. Great lift there by Spiegel. Alex Kazan at 420. And that is going to go for Alex Kazan. Ten minutes ago, I said sarcastically that she might deadlift 430. <laughs> now all of a sudden, that sarcasm is right <laughs> out the door. And that's what she might need to lift if she wants to come away the victor in this event, which is just astonishing that after all the events that these ladies have gone through so far, here in event six, day three of competition at the Rogue Invitational, we're seeing 420 come up off the ground like this. Here's Laura Horvath, who was, I think, maybe talking to her, her coach in the crowd to see what kind of advice that she could get here. We'll see if Laura Horvath can get 420 to count. And she just can't get it past that point. So Laura Horvath will finish third in this event. So she'll pick up five points on Toomey. Toomey will remain the overall leader. But it's razor thin now. Yeah, what a great job there by Laura Horvath. Great event for her overall.
These women are getting an update for what's to come here. We have two women remaining as we take one more look back here at Danny Spiegel. Again, Spiegel with the amazing speed off the floor, a couple hitches there to extend her hip at the top. Folks, when she's hitching that bar, it takes a little bit of the pressure off her spine to extend and it allows it to become weightless just for a second so she can lock it out at the top. And then Alex Kazan, of course, with a smooth, steady lift from the ground to the top, just like we've seen all night long. You have moved up to 425 pounds. Alex Kazan and Danny Spiegel sharing a laugh here as they're putting in some extra work. They have four minutes to rest. They can go whenever they want, but they can use that whole four minutes if they want. But at the end of that, they got to start lifting. <laughs> Alex, is, yeah, you go ahead, Daniel. Yeah. Go, you go first. Hey, have at it. <laughs> Be my guest. <laughs> well, once again, Danny Spiegel finds herself as one of the last women standing in the max lift event. Last year it was with a log, this year it's with a barbell, and there's 425 pounds on it. Four twenty-five for Danny Spiegel. Not able to get it. So if Alex Kazan hits this, she wins it outright. If she misses, it comes down to their time on the tiebreak event that was held. Seems like yesterday. It come down to the time. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it. Danny Spiegel will have the tiebreaker here. So this is for the win for Alex Kazan, and Spiegel is trying to get the crowd on its feet here. Kazan for the win. Easy money. 425 is good for Alice Kazan, and she takes home the event victory. So let me do some calculations real quick. 425 <laughs> pounds. She's also got a listed bench press, Sean, at 270. Get what can Alex Kazan do? I've... Oh, my goodness. 425, it took 18 barbells, but we finally get there, and Alex Kazan picks up her first career event win here at the Rogue Invitational. And it's gotta it's gotta it's a great it's gotta be a great feeling, particularly with the circumstances. Elimination. We we whittled the field down to one and only one athlete, and that got to be Alex tonight. Got to flex her strength here. We talked about her having some natural advantages for the deadlift, the long arms, great setup position, and she excelled tonight under the lights. You gotta love it for a lo young competitor. This is what builds momentum into someone's career, Sean. Someone that's trying to make a push to advance themselves through the upper echelon of the CrossFit competitive space. This is where these memories are stored, and it just continues to build momentum for her going forward, not just through the rest of this weekend, but through some of the years to come. Alex Kazan with the event win, 425 pounds. Danny Spiegel's going to take second. Laurel Horvath picks up another five points on Tia Toomey. And Kyra Milligan with a top five finish as she lifts 395. And Alex Kazan is with Kiki Dixon. Alex, congratulations on your event win. What an exciting show we had here. You PR'd multiple times. Were you expecting that out here tonight? Kinda. <laughs> Do you feel like you had a little bit more in the bag or did you leave it all on the line? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we'll find out another night. Normally when you're working this event or this deadlift at the gym, you're working with rubber plates, Rogue brought out the steel. What were the biggest differences that you noticed between those two things? We weren't allowed to drop it. That was hard. <laughs> and what was it like to go up with Danny, you guys cheering each other on at the same time as being competitors? It was awesome. She's so fun, and like that's what makes these experiences special. It was super fun. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Well, Alex Gazan, actually her second career event win,
She won seat at the bar earlier, so if there's a heavy barbell out there, Alex Kazan has a really good chance of winning that event. Ninth place overall coming in, looking to move into the top five, heading into the final day of competition. The women are done. Heavy barbells going up all over the place. It took 18 rounds, and Alice Gazan outduels Danny Spiegel. Laura Horvath is going to take third, and Tia Toomey will finish in fourth. Plenty more big lifts to come. The men up next here for their one rep max deadlift as our coverage of the 2023 Rogue Invitational continues. Saturday night under the lights here at the 2023 Rogue Invitational and still plenty of big weights to be lifted in event six, the max deadlift presented by Yeti. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with former Affiliate Cup champ Adrian Conway and Kiki Dixon is down on the field. And Adrian, in this atmosphere, this crowd, these lights have a way of adding a few pounds to that PR. Oh, yeah, they add a few pounds, and the athletes are going to need it. They've, they're they now through five events, and into event six, they've got to lift some heavy weight. This crowd has a unique ability to bring the very best out of all these competitors. So overall standings coming into this event, Pat Vellner has a 40-point lead over Brett Fikowski for first place overall. Bjorven Carl Gumanson sneaking around like he always does, sitting there in third, <laughs> 345 points, five points up on Jeff Adler and Noah Olson is inside the top five. He has a five-point cushion on Roman Krennikov. This one couldn't be simpler. We're going to put some heavy weight on a barbell, and we are going to see who can deadlift the most. That's right. We are literally just building to a one rep max deadlift for these competitors. They're going to take the platform, pick up the weight. They will rotate through in groups of four. Then we'll see groups of two down to single athletes, and the weight will just continue to increase as we go. We are still a day away from crowning our champion of the CrossFit competition, but earlier we crowned the champion of the Strongman competition. Mitchell Hooper is your 2023 Strongman champion here at the Rogue Invitational, and he spoke with Kiki Dixon. Mitch, congratulations. You are the 2023 Rogue Invitational Strongman champion. What does this mean to you? I think just being at what uh, the event that Rogue's trying to run for us and, and all the things they do for, for strongmen and for CrossFitters, uh, just being a part of it's pretty special. And then to come out on top and now be the champion, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's special. This is a big year. You just hit lucky number 13 on the podium on top. Got married, wife's pregnant. How did you balance it all? <sighs> I don't know, to be honest. Uh, it's, it's difficult at times. And um, it was actually Ash's birthday over the weekend. so. Um, happy to be able to pull it out and make it worthwhile for her birthday, but it's, uh, it's some people just accepting that responsibilities are different for a little while, um, but I think when the baby comes along, then things will change. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations all around to Mitchell Hooper, and he's a guy who can deadlift a ton of weight. We're going to see how much weight the CrossFitters can lift here. What's the keys to these, this event? Well, the keys, a lot like Mitchell Hooper, would be doing what this weight is to pull it with some speed. These athletes have to address a proper position and then pull the bar with power and speed from the floor. Then the next component is that they need to stay tight. They need to brace the musculature surrounding the spine so that as the lifts do slow, when it becomes heavier and heavier for them, they're able to sustain a solid foundation of posture and that's gonna help them drive through the floor. We're going to start at 455 pounds. This will run exactly the same way as it did with the women. Until we get down to 10 athletes, we will lift on all four platforms. And then after that, we will move to the two middle platforms. Up first, Garrett Clark, Tudor Magda, and Dallin Pepper. No problem for Garrett Clark. Garrett Clark, something to watch there with a great setup. And I'll, I'll tell you what, he's got a listed deadlift around 600 pounds. So definitely someone we've got to keep our eye out on as they work their way through these weights. Bailey Martin, Lazar Jukic, Jason Hopper, and Victor Hoffer up next. All three men in round one. Already successful. Jukic is good. But no rep for Hoffer. Hopper is good, and Martin is good. So Victor Hoffer 
will be the first man out. Yeah, chose not to take an attempt. I, I wonder if he's perhaps feeling fatigue, feeling a strain uh, from one of the earlier events. Knows that it's just not a wise choice to take an attempt at this 455. Will Morad, Yella Hosta, Travis Mayer, and Ricky Garrard coming up. Travis Mayer, an athlete that I expect to have a pretty big performance here under the lights with this deadlift. Mayer, Morad, and Hosta are good. Garrard is through, 455. Jay Crouch, Chandler Smith, Brent Fakowski, and Roman Krenikov coming up next. Roman Krenikov, sixth place overall with 315 points. Chandler Smith being our athlete to really keep an eye on here. He's our athlete to watch throughout this test here. No problem for Smith and Krenikov, all four men. Just warming up. Now we get to Bjorkman, Carl Gugensen, Jeffrey Adler, Noah Olson, and our overall leader, Pat Bellner. 40 point cushion on fellow Canadian Brent Fikowski for the top spot in the overall standing. And definitely one of these athletes to keep an eye on. Great history. Anytime a deadlift is present, even for conditioning at lighter loads, but as it gets higher threshold weight, Pat, Pat has great success with the deadlift. Elner is good. Adler good. Olsen. And Bjorgen Carl Gubinson. Only one man fails to make it through that opening round. That was Victor Hoffer who failed to make an attempt. We are down to 18. We'll move up to now 475. Three, two, one, Wait, we'll get swapped out. Take another look at Jeff Adler. Jeff Adler with a strong base, pretty narrow stance directly underneath his shoulders. Easy work at 455, certainly going to be a while before we see him challenged at all. Pat Vellner, same thing. Again, we're watching the speed off the ground for, for these athletes. BKG probably, of the three of those lifts that we get to watch as a replay, the most labored. But it still looked good for him as he stood it up to the top. Victor Hoffer will fail to get a good lift on the board, but 18 people will move on to 475. Garrett Clark, Tudor Magda, and Dallin Pepper will once again lead us off. We talk about some of the things that people should consider when they think about the deadlift, especially as athletes build through the weight. You want to see that the shoulders and the hips rise at the same rate, which means it's almost as if there is a shelf that we're creating with our back. We want to see it remain like it rises like an elevator till the bar passes the knees. And then as the bar passes the knees, all we're going to do is send the hips forward and the shoulders back to stand up the lift the rest of the way. 475 now on the bar. Dallin Pepper on the right, Tudor Magda on the left. Garrett Clark is also out there on the floor. Three, two, one. No problem for Magda. Dallin Pepper is good. Now Garrett Clark. That will count. Very easy lift for all three of those athletes. Great speed off the floor for Garrett Clark. Next three men, Bailey Martin, Lazar Jukic, and Jason Hopper. Lazar Jukic gets that to go. Bailey Martin and Jason Hopper all moving on.
All moving on, Lazar, from the way that he moved that barbell past his knees. There was already a little bit of a hitch there, even at 475, which tells me that this might not be his favorite favorite lift if you had to pick a list, but we'll see how he's able to adapt as, as the weights continue to climb up and we go to 495. Will Morad, Yellow Hosta, Travis Mayer, and Ricky Garrard up next. I know the deadlift is something that Ricky's been working on. Definitely not one of his favorite lifts at the top of the list. Mayor Morad and Hosta get through. Here's Garrard at 475. That will count for him. Still 18 men left. Next up, Jay Crouch, Chandler Smith, Brent Fikowski, and Roman Krennikov. Three, two, one. When you think back to last year in that log press, it was Chandler Smith going head to head with that man, Roman Krennikov. That's right, and I'd have to imagine both these men really like the, the deadlift. <laughs> Chandler Smith just steps up and rips that thing off the floor. Krennikov is good. Crouch and Fikowski are through. Final round now with Jorvan Carl Gubinson, Jeff Adler, Noah Olson, and Pat Vellner. Final round to 475. I don't see this way presenting a problem here. Is anyone in this group? I think they'll make all the lifts. Adler and Veller are good. Noel Olson gets that to go. And now here's Goomanson. And that will count. 18 men moving on to 495. 495. Once we get the, the closer we creep to this 500 mark, that's one of those numbers here for a lot of these men where it's going to become a bit of a tipping point. I, I think a lot of them will still make it through 495, but then 515 is going to start to present some, some struggle here. We got to keep our eye on Noah. We got to keep our eye on BKG. They both slowed quite a bit there. After the 515 pound bar, we'll start making 10 pound jumps. Chandler Smith just. Smith said, just what, this? Okay, I'll pick it up. What else? Yeah, yeah grip, grip and rip. Anything heavy anything I can else? lift? <laughs> Roman with great form as well. Great hinge position, patience through the pool. And then Brent just a touch slower off the floor. You notice it takes him a moment. Once the slack's out of the bar, it takes about a half second for it to move. And that shows that he's going to be able to continue to grind for a, few, for a few more lifts, but that I don't know how deep he's going to be able to pull into the 500s tonight. Weight getting changed as we move into Round number three, 495 pounds. And if this is anything like the women's competition, we got a long way to go. It took us 18 barbells to find a winner for the women's competition. And same story with the men as far as the tie break is concerned. Before this, they ran two heats of a jerry can carry for time, 100 pounds in each hand, and your time in this race will be your tie break time as Ricky Garrard goes barreling over the finish line. But in the event that two or more athletes are eliminated on the same barbell, that's the time that will be used to break that tie. 495 pounds on the barbell. As Garrett Clark, Tudor Magda, and Dallin Pepper will lead off. Garrett Clark making his first career appearance here at the Rogue Invitational. Qualified through the queue. He's 19th place overall. But this is more of a learning experience for him right now as Magda and Pepper are good. And it is good for Garrett Clark. Garrett Clark is very patient in his setup. He's very methodical there. You can tell he's built a technique of this pattern that he likes to create before he's successful or taking a successful attempt. I think it's really going to pay off for him as we watch the weight continue to go up. A lot like we saw from Paige Semenza on the women's side just a while ago. She was very consistent, methodical in her sled setup, took some time, but all her deadlift reps were very much the same all the way through until she failed. Lazar Jukic and Jason Hopper get their lifts to go, and 
Bailey Martin stays alive. Still 18 men alive in this event as we move to Will Morad, Yella Hosta, Travis Mayer, and Ricky Garrard. There is Yellow Host in 10th place right now. You got three finishes inside the top 10, a second, a seventh, and a fifth, but also two on the wrong side of the top 10, 14th and a 19th. Yeah, and unfortunately, I think this, this lift could present some problems for Yellow. Travis Mayer is good. Morad. Host and hitches that up. Gerard, once again, be the last man to lift. That is good for Ricky. But it survives. Moving into the second to last round, round now. Jay Crouch, that man Chandler Smith, Brent Fikowski, and Roman Krennikov. Now we don't, Chandler Smith is not known for being a technician, Sean. Oh, he doesn't even wait to <laughs> fix the thing up. And everyone else, as Fikowski's working through 495, is good. There's no setup, there's no nothing. Just walk up, pick it up, walk away. That's right. Walk up, pick it up, walk away. <laughs> and that was one thing I was going to mention, though. We were not known, he's not known to be a technician, but I mean, he's amazingly strong. And when, when he addresses the bar, the one thing that he's got to be careful of is not getting carried away with rushing that style of attempt. I know he wants to speed off the bar. In fact, that's one of our points of performance. It's a key to success on this. But he's got to make sure the bar doesn't get away from him. And as this weight gets heavier, he can miss prior to really meeting his full potential. Norman Carl Gumanson, Noah Olson, Jeff Adler, and Pat Vellner, they all get through. 495, and now we get to our last 20 pound jump as we will move up to 515 pounds and into round four. 18 men still alive here. Three, two, one, Let's take a look back at that last round starting with Ricky Garrard. Ricky Garrard. A little bit more of a squatty setup, which means his butt is a little lower than a lot of the other competitors here. That's what works for his body posture and position. Does a great job executing there. Vellner, more of a narrow stance, more of a hinge position. He's got longer arms. It's going to allow him to utilize that leverage that he's created with those long arms to stand up the weight. And then BKG, right between the two of them, a little bit more of a moderated or medium setup. He stands and drives through his quads, and he's able to have success there at the top. BKG's going to have to watch that left side where his hand is supinated or turned under, the side where we see his palm. He's going to have to make sure that that reaches full extension as the load continues to get heavy. That rep was really close. 515 pounds, still 18 men alive in this competition. Victor Hoffer, the only man who's been eliminated so far. And there is Brent Fikowski who comes into this event in second place overall. He's 40 points back of Pat Vellner. <laughs> hey, whatever just, it takes. Hey, listen, Brent Fikowski just giving himself a little smack in the face right as the camera cuts away. That's, the, that's what we're here for. And hey, people have done crazier things, Sean, to get psyched up for a deadlift. <laughs> Jacksonville Jaguars had a defensive lineman by the name of John oh. Henderson who used to have a team assistant slap him in the face before a game. I've, I've seen highlights of this. I've seen this on some, some behind the scenes cut and it's almost scary. Why would you want to be that man that slaps such a large human? What if, he, what if you made him upset? He would hit him and sometimes <laughs> Henderson would get mad that he didn't hit him hard enough. <laughs> and now we move to 515. Tudor Magda, Dallin Pepper and Garrett Clark to kick this off and Clark, once again, yep. taking his time. Yep, taking his time, patient, but then watch. Speed and violence and off the floor. that is good for him. The opposite approach of Chandler Smith. That's right. When I'll say, too, I reached out to Tudor and talked with him a little bit before the competition. Him notoriously being one of the stronger athletes in our sport. Um, I asked him what he thought about the deadlift, and he, he said, you know, hey, honestly, my lifetime PR is 525, but it's been about three years since I've hit a 100 max deadlift. So I think that we're going to see some much heavier weight from Tudor Magda tonight, then 525 as he makes 515 look very light. Jason Hopper is through 515. Lazar Jukic will hitch that up, gets it to go. Now 
from Bailey Martin. Yeah, we see a wide array of setups, hand width, foot position width. Some athletes really excel at putting their base very narrow, feet close together. Some are a bit more closer to hip width. And some are just right there under the shoulders. Will Moore at yellow host to Travis Mayer and Ricky Garrard. Travis Mayer continues to look good here. Morad is through, Hosta is good, and Garrard will stay alive. Two rounds remain. Yeah, I expect a pretty big number from Travis, especially if he's feeling good today. He's one of those athletes when we test lifts like a power clean, like a power snatch where his numbers are pretty high. And this tends to have a strong carryover into the deadlift as I am trying to hold it together. <laughs> I mean, Brent Bukowski, the only man with his face chalked up here. Well, he knows he's got to actually go after this 515, though, Sean. That last lift really went slow for him. I mean, and Smith doesn't waste any time. He's good. Kretikoff's good. Fikowski fighting this thing, and he's going to get it. He's got it. Great fight by Brent there. Chandler Smith is lifting that thing like he's angry at it. And that's the right approach. It's, it's when, you, when you have a simple strength movement, when we talk about something like the strict press, the deadlift, the back squat, the three primary movements in something called the total. They're simple. You can attack them with the ferocity and an intensity that doesn't involve as much skill, as long as that violence that you use is controlled. Gumitson, Adler, Olsen, and Velder. Gumitson's going to fail that rep, and he will be out. Now down to 17 men. Gumitson came in in third place overall. He's only five points up on Adler for that final spot on the podium. Yeah, this, this one's going to hurt him for sure. And, and, and Noah was in a similar situation, but he was able to drive and grind through that. As these weights get heavier, you've got to do whatever it takes to get yourself psyched up. Brent Fikowski. Double. He doubled up on that one. And it worked. It paid off for him. The weight moved a little slow off the ground, right? He, he gets through. He breaks the static position of the bar. Finishes the lift. Chandler, the exact opposite approach, however. Grips and rips that bar directly off the ground. Still great execution, though. Hips and shoulders rise together till the bar passes the knees, and then he extends the hips forward. Chandler's got a tremendous physique for a great deadlift, longer femurs, longer arms that creates a great relationship between his shoulder angle and that barbell, allowing him to use maximized leverage. It's a very similar setup to what we saw from Alex Kazan. We move to the fifth barbell, and now we will just be making 10-pound jumps. We go from 515 to 525 pounds. We have 17 men left in the field as Victor Hoffer and Bjorgren Carl Gumanson have both been eliminated. And there is Noah Olson who comes into this event in fifth place overall, overall with 320 points. He's only 25 points back of Gumanson for third. Yeah. He, uh, he made quite the jump. Clark, Magda, and Pepper will be up first at 525 pounds. Now, Dallin Pepper is one of the stronger athletes in the field, too, particularly for his age. He and Tudor being some of the younger athletes out there, Garrett Clark included. But the bar was starting to slow down a little bit for Dallin on that last deadlift. Now we'll get to that. No problem with Tudor. Magda. <laughs> That was a good look by Dallin. He had to fight, but he was able to execute. Here's Garrett Clark at 525, and that is good. Bailey Martin, Lazar Jukic in the middle of your screen, and Jason Hopper will be up next. Lazar's really got to fight through that sticking point around the mid-thigh to extend his hips forward to get his shoulders back behind the bar. This is this is where the sticking point lies for him. Hopper will get 5.45. Jukic hitting that, hitching that up and he'll make it. 
And now Bailey Martin. We talked about the difference in stances. Bailey Martin's heels almost touching each other in his setup. Very narrow position. And this is advantageous. I, I personally came up through the space and continue to deadlift with a relatively narrow deadlift stance as well. Power travels in a straight line. A lot of athletes like to put their feet where they sprint from or where they jump from. And a lot of times it's a more narrow stance. Will Morad, Yellow Host to Travis Mayer and Ricky Garrard up next. Keep an eye on Ricky Garrard in the bottom right hand part of your screen. He's usually the last man to go in this foursome. Now Morad's going to bow out. Hosta is through. Great lift for Hosta. I think he was pumped to make that. And here's Garrard. He's good. At 5 25. Good lift for Ricky there. It's starting to tax him a little bit more. You can start to see slight rounding in his upper back. And when we see that start to happen, what we know is that with, with our, our focus and point number two, our key to success is staying tight. As athletes start to break and round there, this really minimizes the way that they're able to express power through the floor and through the barbell. They're pressing, but the barbell's not traveling. Instead, they're giving into gravity. Chandler Smith just makes quick work of 525. Jay Crouch is good. Krenikoff is good. And Fikowski taking his time here. 525 for Fikowski. And can't get it to budge. But Brent Fikowski also bowing out. So two of the top three men in the overall standings have been eliminated. You know, and I can tell Brent is not happy about that. You can see as he bends over or stands from a deadlift attempt, he, he's a little ginger with standing up. I wonder if his back's feeling it from all the other work that these athletes have accumulated over the last two days. Belder, Adler, and Olsen at 525. Adler and Belder are good. No, Olsen will get it. Great lift there for Noah. That last barbell at 515 presented a challenge for him. So for him to be able to grind out 525, that was very impressive. Great fight. Fakowski and Gumanson both being eliminated in that round. The closest man to Pat Vellner is Jeff Adler. And Vellner had a 60-point lead over Adler. He has an 80-point lead over Noah Olson. A huge opportunity here for Pat Vellner to add even more points to his lead. Adler making 525, look very light, great posture, great setup. Vellner 525, same deal, very confident still. Great speed with the bar, past the knee, bar stays close to his body. Noah double overhand hook grip, a little bit of a wider setup, which he's known for even in a snatch and his clean and jerk. Slow off the floor and a stinking grind past the knee, but he's able to extend his torso and finish that lift. Great lift there by Noah Olson. Two, Two thumbs, thumbs up. up for Noah Olson. 525 goes up for him. We talked about Chandler Smith and just how fast he is. And let's take a look at his first four lifts, back to back to back. Here's 475, no problem. Here's 495, yep. about the same. 515, and now 525. Yep. I bet if we put a clock to it, Sean, it's about the same amount of time for every lift. Only thing that's different, he might have a little bit more focus or a little bit more tenacity in his face. But other than that, the output is the same into that barbell. Now we move to 535 pounds, back to the top of the order. Garrett Clark, Tudor Magda, and Dallin Pepper. Dallin Pepper asking for a little help from the crowd. Yeah, he's got a Dallin up. Dallin's got, a, Dallin's got Annie up here. Magda's good. Pepper has it. And Garrett Clark. And that will bring us to Bailey Martin, Lazar Jukic, and Jason Hopper. overall coming off an event win in duel. He is able to pull 535. Jukic is good. And 
Bailey Martin gets through 535. Impressive. Impressive. Hopper's sticking point for him is going to be off the floor. If Hopper can get it past his knee, it looks like he's going to be successful. The other two, Jukic and Martin, are going to have some, some trouble as the bar passes their knee. So again, athletes navigating different sticking points. It's very common. Some of it is in the hip extension at the top, and some of it is the posterior engagement at the very bottom. Yellow host to Travis Mayer and Ricky Garak. No problem, Travis Mayer. Osta. Great hey, count. Great look for Yellow. Comes Ricky Gerard. Losing his balance, trying to fight through it. He has it. I can tell he'll be very grateful for that lift. That was a fight there. Almost lost it in his heels. And that's what we start to see. We almost saw. Lazar lose a lift the same way. Athletes that battle that hitch either tend to come to their toes and the weight then pulls them forward or they go so far back in their heels. Chandler Smith, no big deal, 535 is good. Crouch is good and Krenikov makes it through. Easy for Roman, easy for Chandler. Chandler heading into the dugout for a second. Swing a couple bats in the on deck circle just to <laughs> stay warm. <laughs> now Adler Olsen and Velen with the final three at 535 pounds. I know. Velen is good. Adler is good. Let's see if Olsen can get through here. <laughs> no Olsen, <laughs> unable to get 535 but keeping a smile on his face. So Olsen is now out. Last successful lift, 525 pounds for him. 15 men remain. Solid performance there by Noah. I mean, he really fought, fought for the last two bars that he was successful at hitting. He's got to be very pleased with that. Now we're starting to see more men struggle a little bit here. Lazar Jukic had a good fight at 535, able to hitch that up. That's right, he had a heck of a hitch there. Uh, he timed it just right. I, I can tell that he's worked with some heavy loads in the form of this lift. He understands where his limitation is and knows how to correct it. Ricky was in the same boat. Notice that as he starts to stand, his hips start to rise without the bar. That's the first cue that the weight's getting heavy. As their butt comes up first, then the bar sweeps back, and then of course we see his hitch at the top, and this is where it almost cost him. Too far back in his heels. Luckily, he got the lockout signal there from the judge that he could put the bar down. And then we got Mr. Roman Krenikov. Clean execution through the knees, a slight hitch at the top as the bar stops. Now, Roman has a unique build, and I say that because he's got a longer torso. And, and athletes with a longer torso, well, they, they tend to have a great advantage when it comes to squatting movements because their torso stays upright. When it comes to hinging and standing from the bottom, Roman tends to feel the brunt of this load as the bar passes his knees versus when it's on the floor. So that's where he has that hitch, and that's what he's got to continue to overcome as the weights get heavier. And now the weight goes up to 545 pounds. Noel Olsen and Brent Fikowski. Their night is done. They are two men in the top five in the overall standings right now. It's an opportunity for a lot of guys to move into contention for a spot on the podium as we head into the final day of competition on Sunday. Clark, Magda, and Pepper up first here at 545. Hooter Magda looking good. Dallin Pepper will hit it. And Garrett Clark, successful at 545. That was a good look for all those, those young men there. Tudor made that 545 look just like 455 did. So this is a good sign for him. He's looking very crisp, very sharp. Still great speed on the bar, bar and also great posture. Bailey Martin, Lazar Jukic, and Jason Hopper up next. Keep an eye on Lazar Jukic, because he really had to fight that 535-pound barbell. Hopper out the floor here. Yeah, he gets it going, he'll be good. Hopper's good. Lazar on the other hand, he's got to get that scoop. Hips forward. Jukic's not able to get there. 
Billy Martin's going to have the same deal. He's going to get it up. Martin's fighting it. He's fighting it. And he will get it. Wow. Wow. That's almost as long as that Dave Castro rest. <laughs> Uh, we, we're going to have to bring this <laughs> Great lift there by Bailey, honestly. Hats off to him. I mean, that's a tremendous fight. Uh, many athletes, including myself, man, I'd have, I'd have dropped that barbell after about 15 seconds of time of attention. I'm not going to lie. Great lift there. An amazing lift by Yellow Hosta, who seems to be feeding off of some great momentum. I think from 525 on, he was very pleased to be making a successful lift. So 545 was, a, was great for him. Now Ricky Garrard is unable to get through. His night is done. And that'll be it for Ricky. I know that he was really looking forward to, to showing his stuff with the deadlift. It's something he's working on. He'll continue to re rebuild that movement. Roman Krennikov, Jake Rouse, Chandler Smith. The first time that Smith looked like he put out any effort. Yep. Down to 12 men. Now Adler and Velder close things out here at 545. Now, now this weight off the floor, Sean, has looked a little heavier than I expected for Jeff. He's strong historically. Deadlift not his strongest lift, but it takes him a second to get it moving. Velder good for Adler. 12 men remain. Ten more pounds going on the barbell. We're up to 555. About 252 kilos. So Lazar Jukic was the first man to bow out at this weight. Yeah, and you can tell there again, the, the clear sign is slight rounding of the spine. The hips go first, and then he tried to re-dip under the load there to try to extend his hips. He's a little too far behind the bar. You got to keep your shoulders on top of the bar for another half a second, Lazar, and you'll bet you'll make that lift. And this so far was the battle of the night. Bailey Martin versus 545 pounds. Notice that position that he's in. His shoulders are still on top of the bar, and then he pivots. He tries to get the bar back, keeps tilting his hips back to pull his shoulders back on top, and then he can inch it up to that lockout position. What a fight. 12 men left. We are on to our eighth barbell. 555 pounds is Roman Krennikov. Krennikov in sixth place overall. And a couple of the men ahead of him have been eliminated. Noah Olson, who sits in fifth. Adler's still alive. Gumanson and Fikowski, they're both out as well. So Roman Krennikov has an opportunity to put himself back inside the top three. That last lift was a bit of a test for Roman, so we're going to have to see how he adjusts his positioning and execution in order to stay alive here against a field that seems to have several of the men very confident in both their position and their speed off the floor as, as we approach 555 here. We're set for the first three athletes at 5.55. Gary Clark, Tudor Magda, Dallin Pepper. Tudor Magda still looking strong. Now Dallin Pepper and Gary Clark at the same time. Clark is good. Pepper's trying to fight through this, and he's not going to get it. Now we are down to 11. Dallin did a great job of getting that bar off the ground and creating a fight. Probably has less experience with trying to find that position to properly hitch back in order to save a lift as it starts to slow down to a halt past his knee. That's, that's certainly a skill that has to be practiced in order to confidence. Confident. Jason Hopper will hit 555. We'll see if Bailey Martin has anything left in the tank. Roman Krennikov 
decided to get out there and lift. That was not his designated time. And Bailey Martin is not even going to give this thing a whirl. Yeah, Sean, after a fight that he put up to the bar last time, I, you know, it's, 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 it's a great, great choice by him. Way to, way to think ahead. Yellow Hosta and Travis Mayer up next. Travis still going to pull this bar up like it's nothing. That is good cool there. Hosta is going to be eliminated now. 5.45, the best lift for him. So the tie break times are coming into play here on this barbell. Down to 10 athletes. So this will be the final time we're using all four platforms. But Jay Crouch and Chandler Smith will be up next. Krennikoff was supposed to go with these two, but he's already lifted. Chandler Smith is good at 555. Jake Crouch is wow. good at 555. Impressive for Jake Crouch. Adler and Vellner be the last two men at the 555 pound barbell. I don't have a listed wonder max for Jay, but he's one of the smaller athletes in the field. It's, it's impressive to see the way he's moving the, this heavy weight. Here comes Jeff Adler along with Pat Velder. 555. Adler fourth place overall coming into this event. And he is done. So now, Vellner really has an opportunity to put a stranglehold on the top spot in the overall standings. Yeah, and Pat looks sure and Pat looks strong there. No hesitation. Lift continues to look smooth. Roman's joking with him. Why did it look so easy? Mine doesn't look like that. Here's Roman at 555. Slight round to his upper back. That's how he starts to lift. It is on purpose, folks. And then as he extends his legs, he slides that bar up his thighs and pulls his shoulders back to make sure that lift counts. Stares at his judge until he gets the down signal. He was pretty pumped about the 555. Vellner, on the other hand, a little bit of a second to get that bar moving, but once it does, it's a straight path all the way through to finish. And then Jeff Adler here. We noticed the bar was coming off the floor a little bit slower on his last two attempts, and he just kind of knows when the day is done for him there. It's a vet move. He's going to save some energy so he can advance forward. Of course, everyone's going to want to get the points that are available to them, but it's one of those choices where do you fight for a sloppy repetition that might cost you some back soreness and extra fatigue for the next day, or do you pack it in for the day and call it good with a 545, and, and that's what he chose to do. Clark, Magda, Hopper, Mayer, Crouch, Smith, Krennikoff, and Vellner all still alive. And Roman Krennikoff is the closest man to Vellner in the overall standings who is still lifting. And Krennikoff is 85 points back. And now we move to two platforms. Smith, Clark, and Vellner all have the three heaviest listed PRs of the athletes still lifting here. No shock because we've seen Vellner do well in the CrossFit total back in 2018 at the games. Chandler Smith listed at 635. And Clark's listed as 600. And when Chandler Smith exploded onto the scene back in 2016, it was during the regional competition where he was just repping out 405 pounds in a deadlift and made it look like nothing. Made it look like nothing. Run, GHD sit-ups, and deadlifts. I will agree with Chandler as I have never seen a workout that looked more appetizing personally. <laughs> but boy, he made that 405 pound barbell look ridiculous. Garrett Clark and Tudor Magda up first at 565 pounds. Good, 
It's the only event that I ever won at a regional. There you go. I like a deadlift too. <laughs> I know how to identify a good deadlifter. We got these long arms and long legs, man. Short torso. Magda is in 565. Eric Clark once again taking his time. And he is through. And one thing that you'll notice, and, and we'll see this in, in different setups for different athletes, but you'll watch Garrett set his hands on the bar, rock his butt high in the air, and then load his knees down toward the bar to begin his lift. And what he's doing is priming and engaging his posterior. It feels a slight stretch in the hamstrings. And as he creates that stretch, it, it allows his body to literally load up for the lift and spring from the ground with more power and speed. Eight men left, Jason Hopper and Travis Mayer now going after 565. And they are both through. Both looking good. Jason Hopper, I gotta say, has looked better the last two bars than he did previous, the previous two bars. I, mean, I don't know if it's a, it's a, it's, he's bringing more focus to the lift now that it's heavier, but it looks a little cleaner off the floor, a little bit more controlled. There's Chandler Smith. He's 11th place overall, but a lot of the men ahead of him in the overall standings have already bowed out of the competition. He finished on the podium here last year, took second place at the Rogue Invitational in 2022. This is the ninth lift here. And Chandler Smith makes 565 look easy. Jay Crouch, his lift is good as well. Krennikov and Velner will be the last two men to go. It's going to be a big test here for Roman. He's got to stay tight as he moves that bar off the floor, especially as it passes his knees. The more rigid he can remain, the more success he'll have to get through that hitch at the top. Belner good at 565. Renikoff yeah. will get it. All eight men get through the 565 pound barbell. And now we move to 575. This will be the 10th barbell that they have attempted. It took 18 for the women's competition. The women were just warming up at this point. <laughs> Here's Jay Crouch at 565. A little hesitation off the ground there for Jay, but was able to recoup good position and finish the lift strong. Again, very impressive him being one of the lighter and smaller athletes in the field. 565, nothing overlooked. Pat Vellner looking very consistent. One of his slower lifts, but again, form-wise, repetitive from the time that we started lifting 455. And then Roman here was able to sustain a bit of a better posture actually on 565 than he was at 555. Still took the hitch at the top, but he was able to stand it up all the way through. Eight men still left in this competition. 575 pounds on the barbell as it's 10 pound jumps from here on out. crew getting things reset and said it earlier, but the equipment crew, the volunteers here at the Rogue Invitational have done a phenomenal job, not only just keeping things on schedule, but also dealing with all the curveballs that have been thrown at them throughout this weekend. Moving equipment around, making sure the events are on time. We thank them for their efforts. And thank all the volunteers and all the competitions that take place, because without them, these things do not happen. They, they don't exist. They, they never make it through. There, there's no doubt about it. And teamwork makes a dream work. It's amazing the willingness and the volume of people that are willing to come be a part of this simply to serve and to help it take place the way it does. I mean, we watch people set the stage for an entire event, then have to cover the equipment or take it off just to pivot around the weather like you mentioned, Sean. And it's just been, it's been greatly impressive, especially at the high level that we see it being done here at any, at any rogue event. When we get down to five men, we will move to that barbell that is resting on home plate here at Dell Diamond Stadium. And there is Garrett Clark who has already guaranteed himself his best finish of this competition. As the worst he can do is eighth place. 
575 on the bar. It's Clark and Magda up first. Tudor still one of the better performing athletes having this point on the bench. Wow. It doesn't look like Clark is going to make an attempt. Interesting choice there. I mean, we, we saw him lift 565 successfully. It looked good. Maybe he felt something in his back or just knows that this is, again, this is one of the tipping points for him and wants to continue to make sure that he can perform through tomorrow. Right now, looking like he's going to finish in eighth place unless anyone else is eliminated by this barbell, and that would be his best finish of the competition. Let's watch Travis pull this bar up with speed and power off the floor. Hopper's going to try to do the same. 575 for Travis Mayer is good, and Jason Hopper will hit it. Great job there. Great fight by both men. I can tell that actually making that lift surprised Jason Hopper. It, he gave the crowd a big whoa, and uh, it, it, it showed. He, uh, he, he, I don't know if he expected it to come all the way off the floor with the way it hesitated. <laughs> Travis Mayer having a little fun with his form, imitating what he thinks he just did, but it doesn't matter. It's going to count. Yep. Here comes Chandler Smith. He will be lifting with Jake Crouch at 575. Now Chandler's got to find this balance of control and power off the floor. 575 is good for Chandler Smith. 575 for Jake Crouch. And he will make it. <laughs> Signals to his boys in the back. Yo, that's it for me right there. I'm pumped about that. Roman Krennikov and Pat Vellner will be up next. How's that go if you're at the gym? You tell, you signal that to your lifting partner, and they're like, nah, come on, man. You got one more. <laughs> Five seventy-five for Pat Vellner. Will count. Roman not able to hitch it up. Gosh, great effort by Roman there. Great, great performance there. Still, still there by him. But you know, it's it's one of those things where we're nitpicking and we're getting down to the details. If Roman can keep his shoulders on top of that bar, which means him hinged forward just a touch longer, a half inch perhaps, so it's a little higher on his thighs when he starts to lean back. I think he makes that lift. Here's Hopper, fighting, wait, wait. Okay, there we go, I got it now. And that's very normal, we, we see the body take time to recruit the necessary musculature in the form of a deadlift to get the load all the way up top. This is why we, we deem that speed is important in a point of performance, because the sooner your body identify, identifies what is necessary to make the lift happen, the less fatigue that builds as you can stand through the weight. Then we got Jay Crouch again, one of the smaller athletes in the field at 575, putting up a fight through the hitch, all the way through the thighs. Great execution. And then here's Roman at 575. Watch how smooth the bar comes off the ground. But here, stay on top of the bar, Roman, just for another split second, then lean back to pull those shoulders back. And I think that he'll have an opportunity to perhaps bring his hips forward and his shoulders back to make the lift. Now we move up to 585 pounds, and we're gonna go ahead and make the jump, it looks like. To center stage. Surprised that barbell is still there. I think somewhere Chase Ingram is lurking, waiting to get his hands on that thing and take it back home. <laughs> you know he is. It's, it's red, white, and blue, isn't it? <laughs> and it's got the Texas flag, so. They got that, too. That checks two boxes for our good friend, two Chase. Still going to lift on the two platforms. They're just keeping up with the weight there on the home plate platform. I thought maybe since we had six, we'd just go ahead, but we're not to five yet. One man needs to be eliminated before we get to that single platform. It's Tudor Magda will lift by himself as 
Garrett Clark is no longer in this event. Tudor looking to move up into this point here. A little bit of shape shifting there. Now again, his back on 585, but when it comes to weight, he still moved that very smoothly all the way to the top. Coming back around to Travis and Jason Hopper. Travis Mayer and Jason Hopper here. Travis fast off the ground with his double overhand hook grip, but then gets a little bit sticky as the bar passes his knees. His body started to tremble and shake a little bit. You see this when you're kind of toward the top end of fatigue uh, in a deadlift, and your body's just kind of fighting its way to the top. 585 for Hopper. Can't get it to go, and Mayer will not get it to go. And Mayer was the closest man in the overall standings to Pat Vellner. Seventh place overall, and he trails Vellner by 100 points. You got time. Pat just completely frothed at the way that these athletes are dropping like flies right now. Down to four men. Chandler Smith is one of them. Jay Crouch is now going to bow out. Smith at 585. No problem. Wow. He's laughing about it, saying something to Pat. I hope it's something like, I could do this all night. Solo lifter in the final straight going to be Patrick Bell. Bellner, the last man to go. At 585. Three, two, one. 585 for our current overall leader. That is good for Pat Belder. We will move to center stage as we jump up to 595 pounds. It's Vellner, Magda, and Smith. The showdown begins. All right, up into this point, what I see, Chandler Smith's got some great potential, but we check in here, Jason Hopper on the replay. That last lift took a while to get off the ground, and that one just wasn't budging for him. Just no more juice left for, for, for tonight. Great effort there by Jason Hopper. And then Chandler Smith, Still a little pause at the bottom, but once that bar starts creeping up, there's no denying that he's standing up with that thing. And then Pat Vellner, same idea. He takes a slack out of the bar. There's a little bend there, and then he's undefeated as the bar passes his shin. He has no problem at the lockout part. Now we move to the main barbell. One lifter at a time, and there it is. Painted like the Texas flag, and it will be loaded with some Texas weight, 595 pounds. That's 270 kilos. And Tudor Magda should be the first man up. In the bigger picture, the worst that Pat Vellner can do now is third place. That would add 90 points to his total. And he's going to have a monstrous lead heading into the final day of competition here. Which looking back, hey, that's a great place for Pat to be. It's not something we see often, though, with him with, him with such a great cushion. So it'll be it'll be a new place if he's able to finish strong here tonight and take that take that momentum into tomorrow. We know that Pat does know how to win here, though. He is the only former champion in the field. He won this competition in 2020. Take a look at Chandler Smith, a guy who was on the podium last year. Vellner has always done well at the Rogue Invitational. This is his fifth appearance here. He's never been lower than fourth. He's been second twice, and he won in 2020. I just got to say, Sean, Chandler Smith with that belt on with his shirt and pants, he just looks looks like a man that I saw walking around the global gym growing up where <laughs> I was going to play pickup basketball, and he just always had his weightlifting belt on, lifting heavy weights. 
Tudor Magna trying to get the crowd fired up as he steps up to 595 pounds. Magda will get it. Great the 20 year old out of Iowa. Got some farm strength right there. Yeah, what a great lift. Very impressive. He's someone again that I touched base with. He said his last PR was 525. That was three years ago. He hadn't really maxed a, a one rep in quite a while. So, yeah, we could have seen him knock down like 10 PRs. Here comes Chandler Smith. And that is good for Chandler. And Pat Vellner will be up next at 595. I mean, if you're looking for a Halloween costume, that one is going to be pretty easy to put together. Just get yourself a nice white polo shirt, a hat, and a weightlifting belt, a pair of sweats. That could be Chandler Smith for Halloween. Of course, you might need to put on about 40 or 50 pounds of muscle to make yep. it believable, but... Yep. Oh, that's going to be great. Oh, the Valencia soccer jersey from the Spanish League is Chandler Smith. Now, Velmer is good. All three men stay alive, and we will move up to 605 pounds. We had some discussions earlier among some of our peers. How many men are going to deadlift over Three, 600 pounds? Two, one, rotate. Three was a pretty solid number. Let's see who advances. Barbell that's coming up. Why you heard the man? Magda G put it out Bellman. there. Time to add that weight, 595. Talking things over. Is one more look at Magda's effort. Great lift there by Tudor. Again, we've got a little bit of rounding in the back, but he was very, very excited to stand it all the way through the top. Chandler Smith made slight work of this. It took a second to get off the floor, but again, then at the top, just one slight hitch. And Pat Vellner, I got to say, once that bar gets moving for him, there's no stopping it. There's no pausing. There's no hitching. He just stands it up. <laughs> Had to get confirmation from his judge, but yes, that was a good rep. I could be wrong, Sean, but it looked like Tudor was communicating to the athletes. He might be, he might not be taking the next attempt. Or I, I, no, never mind. He's getting his mind right right now. I can tell. He's getting ready. Well, that last lift certainly took a pretty huge effort from Tudor Magda. As we now add 10 pounds, we move up to 600. Five pounds is now the 13th barbell that these men will lift. All right, this is one of those numbers. It looks real good over 600, fellas. Got to go get it. Peter Magda trying to get himself fired up. The crowd is on its feet. 6.05 on the barbell. We are way past his listed deadlift PR. Not able to get it. Not a surprise given how hard he worked on that last lift. A lot of lifts, a lot of heavy lifts, 120 snatches and several sandbag cleans into that teeter earlier. These men know exactly where their posterior chain is, let me tell you, because they're feeling it there. That's Big gonna time. be his best finish of the competition. Can't do worse than third place. Back to 18th place overall, so he will move up the overall scene. We will see if it is indeed Chandler time at 6.05. Wasting no time, and it is indeed Chandler time. 6.05 is good for Chandler Smith. Here comes Pat Vellner. The second straight year, it's Chandler Smith, one of the last two men in the max lift event. Last year it was Krennikoff and Smith in the log press. This year it's Smith and Velder. Velder's got to get through this. If he doesn't, Chandler Smith's going to win the event. 
Bulls pull through it. So five for Velder. Not going to make it, and that means that Chandler Smith is going to win the event. He was so close there, Sean. It really looked like his grip blew up. Hand damage, taped up hands. I, I, I think he, he, he fell a little short of the count. He just couldn't hold on to the weight. Well, Chandler Smith asking the crowd if they want one more. And I think he's going to do it. Yeah, oh yeah. Hey, throw it on there. Why not? Let's go 15. Um, I guess I think he's asking for 6'10". He's 90 seconds. No big deal. Just 6'10". 6'10". Just going to casually lift that for the 15th barbell. You were making the ball look so easy. I thought you smelled like 21 pounds. That's what I said. It's like it's good until it's not. I just, when I got like halfway, my fingers were like ripping. And I was like, eh. <laughs> I was like, you can hear Pat yeah, saying it. it just wasn't worth it. I mean, he's going to have a monstrous lead hanging into the final day. So at this point, Pat Melder, five extra points are going to make a gigantic difference. Now Chandler Smith is going to try to put on a show here, go after 610 pounds. I'm at the clock. Little shot back here at 605. Again, attacks it with aggressiveness like we've seen him do rep after rep after rep. Slight hesitation off the ground. A couple hitches at the top. The bar still moved so fast, Sean. He's got more in the tank for sure. And this was Velner. It looked like he was going to make it. He got it past that sticking point, just unable to stand it up. And you see him, he immediately looks at his fingers and still have three events to go tomorrow. He has already won, has Chandler Smith. 30 seconds. But everybody came here to see big weights right. go up, and now there's 610 pounds on that barbell. That's right. Put on a show for him, Chandler. That's what, they, that's what they came here for. That's what they came here for. Team player. It's special. Rogue brings that kind of energy every time. And as we mentioned at the top here, this crowd, this environment, can add some weight to your PR. Here comes Chandler Smith for 6'10". And sending the crowd home happy is Chandler Smith. 6'10", an event win, and it is indeed Chandler time. You gotta love it. What excitement, what an event. What a team player, Chandler. Putting on a show for the fans. You gotta love it. First event win here at the Rogue Invitational in this year. He's got four now total in his career. What a way to end the night. Chandler Smith gripping and ripping 610 pounds. That's great. Thank you. Cool. You pick up 100 points. He had 275 coming in. And there's a good chance he moves into the top 10. Oh, yeah, another look back at the 610 for the icing on the cake. Stood it up just like he did 605. A little bit more of a fight above the knee, but he showed us what time it was, and it's Chandler time. And the crowd loves it. Chandler Smith did need to do it but sending people home with a smile as he hits 610 pounds, and he is with Kiki Dixon. Look at you, camera. Chandler, you didn't have to do that extra rep, but you did. Why? Um, I've never really got the chance to max out on a deadlift environment like this, and uh, I know that considering that I'm 30 and I just broke my back, I probably won't ever do that again, so I wanted to see how far I could squeeze it while the adrenaline was going and before the, uh, the medical bills kicked in. Well, it was very exciting. We have to also address the look here. What was the inspiration? You look very dapper. Um, I, I thought like we're pretty close to Halloween, so I figured I'd go as a, as a gym teacher. So this is kind of my vibe. That's my, my aspirational job. So you dress for the job you want, not the one that you have. Amen. There was a lot of fist bumps, a lot of fist bumps between you, the competitors, friends. How fun is it to come out here and throw down side by side along them? Honestly, this weekend I've been getting uh, beat pretty bad, so it hasn't been that fun. But when you, if you get your moment, everyone's got their party trick, right? We're all pretty good to have gotten here. So when you get your chance, you got to let it fly and then um, 
pick up the pieces later. Awesome. Thanks so much, Shannon. Good time. Beat Navy. <laughs> Chandler Smith, first event win of this competition, fourth of his career at the Rogue Invitational, and a little extra to boot for the fans. Oh, 6.05 is the winning weight, although he did lift 610 pounds. Pat Vellner, because of the tie break, is going to pick up 95 more points with a second place finish. Tudor Magda gets his best finish of the competition. Travis Mayer takes fourth, and it's Jason Hopper rounding out the top five. Remember, Chandler Smith did lift 610, but he had already won the competition with that 605 pound lift. Even though he's a gym teacher, he does not get extra credit. <laughs> well, that's gonna do it for a very busy day here at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. We crowned a strongman champion. Congratulations to Mitchell Hooper. And we ended the night with more big weights going up. Chandler Smith takes the event with a 605 pound lift and then threw 610 on to put on a show. You can head to roguefitness.com slash invitational for all the standings and more. Thanks so much for joining us everybody for Adrian Conway, Kiki Dixon and Lawrence Chalet and our whole crew here in Round Rock, Texas. We'll see you tomorrow for the final day of the 2023 Rogue Invitational.